Framer Tutorial. Hello everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Framer. If you don't know what Framer is, it's a tool that allows you to build a website without the use of code. From simply clicking some buttons and adding your own imagination, you can create a stunning website to showcase to whatever audience you desire. And not only that, you can also use one of their many features that they have to offer, which is their AI website builder. I'll explain that later on in the video, but before we start the tutorial, there will be a link down below which you guys can click on to follow along with what I showcase. Now apart from that, let's get into the tutorial. So starting off, you want to be on the website. Again, there'll be a link you can click down below to get here. So what we can do is start with AI. However, I will show you how to build your own first and then I'll explain start with AI uh, later into the video. But first off, you want to go ahead and click the launch button in the top right. And then you should be on their dashboard. As you can see, I've created my account. So there's four options here. You can start with AI, you can use HTML to Framer. So if you already have a uh, website, you can import it. You can paste from Figma. Again, the same concept as the HTML. And you can watch a tutorial. But first off, you wanna go ahead and click the new option down here to create a new website. And then here we are. This is where we can start to create our own website. So first off, I'll go over the basics. So if we look down at the bottom here, we have a little taskbar. So there is the pointer, which obviously allows you to drag around your website. There is the hand option, which allows you to pan and as well as also zoom in and out. If you did want to zoom in and out, you can hold control and then use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out like so. You then have this little message bubble, which allows you to type messages for maybe a team. And then you can change the theme. So if you want it to be a uh, day like so or night, I prefer the darker options, a bit more easier on my eyes. You can then change to how you want to view your website. So if you want to zoom in and out, personally, I like to just simply hold control and, uh, and scroll in and out it's a lot more easier. And then as you can see, the page that we currently have is for desktop. So what we can do is go to the right of that and there's a little plus button that we can go ahead and click on, which we can then add a tablet version and as well as a phone version. So now that we have all three here, you can see what it would look like once we start creating a website on desktop, tablet, and your phone. So now we can go ahead and start to look at what we want to add to our website. So if we go in the top left over here, it says insert. We can then go through the basics. So there's pages, sections, navigations, and even menus. Then under that, you can also add any elements. So media, forms, icons, etc. And then at the top here, again, like I've said before, there is the AI option, which I'll show at the end of the video. And if you did have a website already, assuming you don't, you won't have to really worry about this, but you can paste it here if you wanted to as well. So starting off, we want to go ahead and look at the page. So as you can see, there's the page option and you have a lot of options to choose from. You can choose from a simple landing page like so, a portfolio, a teaser, a blog, an article, sidebar, project pages, a lot of things that you guys can go through. I'm gonna start off something simple. So I'm just gonna have a landing page. So I'm gonna hover over and click add page. It's then gonna add the page as shown. So as you can see, this is the landing page. Obviously, I'm not gonna have that as the title. But what I can do here is I can change the text, I can add a photo, I can change the buttons, I can change everything that I see here and even add animations to it as well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just quickly pan out so I can see all my options. So this is what it also looks like on a tablet as well as the phone. So we do need to keep an eye on these both considering that not everything on desktop is gonna look the exact same on specifically phone and we might need to do a bit of tweaking and changes on the phone option as well. So now that we have our landing page, we can go ahead and start editing things. So let's say I wanted to change the landing page to whatever my website is called. I can go ahead and click on this. And then we have a lot of options to go through. So you can adjust the size of the text. You can add effects, you can add overlays, styles. You can change the color of it, obviously, and you can change the fonts and all of that good stuff. So to start off, we can change it to whatever we want to uh, name our website. So let's say, for example, I wanted to call it. And of course, if I wanted to make it bigger, I can simply just adjust it like so. There's options here. And if I wanted to change the color, there's a color option that I can change it to. So let's say I wanted to make it a little bit of a lighter blue like so. Now let's say I wanted to keep a similar color palette throughout my website. What I can do is choose a color like so, and then I can simply click the plus button next to styles. I can give it a name, so I'll just call this one blue, and then I can click create. 
So instead of having to always try and color match, I can simply now go to my styles and then click the blue option. I can then also change the font of it. So as you can see here under font, I can change to whatever I'd like. So there's a lot to go through. I can also choose to make it bold. There's a lot of things I can do here. So there's thin, thin italic, extra light, etc. It is up to you and what you want to choose. You can then also add an animation to your text or even your photos. For this example, I'm just going to be using the text. So I'll go over to the effects tab and click the plus button. I can then choose to what I would like to add. So I'm just going to go ahead and do appear. I can then edit this. So let's say I wanted the trigger to be on scroll. So whenever I scroll, I can then choose the direction. So if I scroll down, the title should fade out. And then obviously I want it on replay. So if it's on replay, that means it will keep on doing that when I scroll up and down. So for the most part, you want to keep replay on. And then of course you can choose the effects. So if you wanted to fade out, scale out or flip or whatever you guys would like, I'm going to keep it on fade out. What you then can do is go to the top right and click the play button, which allows you to preview and look at the effect that you just added. So now if I scroll down, as you can see, it will fade out. And then obviously if I go back up, it will fade back in. That is the replay option, by the way. And not only that, you can do that to anything you'd like. So let's say you had a photo here, you can add the same effect as well. So as I was, so as I was explaining before, you can add a photo here. So what we need to do is just double click on it and then you can choose an image. Let's say you didn't have an image or you didn't know what to put as a photo in this section. We can go ahead and click the unsplash option, which will give us a lot of images that we can choose to put there. So let's say I wanted this underwater photo here. I can just simply click on it like so, and it will apply it to my photo. And again, you can do this to absolutely everything. So you can do it to this text here. You can do it to this little get started button here logos, any photos, it's entirely up to you. Now do keep in mind every time we do add something, you also want to go ahead and check the tablet and phone display to make sure everything's aligned and looking good. And if not, of course, it's as simple as simply just going to the phone area and just adjusting it to what makes it look right. And a great way to see if everything is working as it should, we can go ahead and simply just play the play button in the top of the website. Now, if we go ahead and go back to the insert option, we can add more things such as a section, navigation or menus. So let's say we wanted to add a section. So I'll go ahead and add this. I can choose to where I would like to put it. So let's say I wanted to put it in the middle here. I can do that. That is a bit of an awkward spot. So what I can do is just simply move it down like so. Then if I wanted to add navigation, so let's say I wanted to add a little bar at the top, I can go ahead and choose this option here, drag it to the top. And now we have a navigation bar. So if I scroll here, there you go. And just like everything else that I've shown you, you can edit all these if you'd like. So let's say you didn't want to have templates. All I can do is, is double click on this section. I can then go to templates and then remove it. I can do the same for gallery and just have whatever I want. So let's say I just wanted features like so. Then I now just only have features and discovery. Of course you can change these as well. You can change the font, the style, anything you guys would like. You can even change the logo if you want it as well. Another cool thing you can do is you can add media. So let's say you wanted to add a YouTube video. So I can go ahead and click the YouTube option and drag it to where I'd like to place it. So let's say I wanted to place it under the get started option. There we go. So now we have a video. And then if you aren't already on it, you can just double click and you can choose to add what link you want to display on the website. So now let's say someone were to go onto your website. Let's click play. They'll scroll down and they can play the video that you have displayed. You can also do this with other elements. So you can add Spotify, podcast, SoundCloud, an MP3, an image, even a GIF. It's entirely up to you. You can also add other things like forms. So you can add a form, icons, interactive things. So a slideshow, a search bar, your socials if you wanted to add. So obviously you'd most likely have Instagram or Facebook. So you can incorporate that into your website. And yeah, that is the basics of Framer. And that's how you can create a quick and easy website. So now let's say I've gone through my entire website. I've changed everything to my liking. I've added animations, I've added coloring. I've made it look all good and beautiful. I can then go to the top right and click publish. I can then add a custom domain. So if I wanted to name something for my website, so let's say Framer Tutorial, like so, I can then click the arrow. Unfortunately, this domain is already taken, but you can choose your own domain if it is available. Or if you did have your own website, you can simply just plug this in here and it will create it for your own website. However, you do have to have the upgraded plan, which I'll explain the pricing plans at the end of this video. Before we get into the pricing options, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the AI option. So let's say I really didn't know where to start with my website or I just wanted inspiration. 
I can go ahead and click the insert option and click Framer AI. I can then ask Framer what I want in my website. So I can ask them to design something along my specifications. So if you are going to use Framer AI, I highly recommend you be very specific in what you want. So for an example, I've wrote design a bright, catchy landing page for my company that specifies in car detailing with a minimalistic look. So obviously you can go a bit more in depth, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this. And what I'll do is click the start option. It's then going to start to generate a page right in front of my eyes. So this is what the AI has generated. As you can see, it looks all right. There's a lot of things obviously that I'd like to change, but based off just from what I've typed, it has created you a whole website based off your specifications. So just like I explained before in the tutorial, you can change to whatever you like. So let's say I wanted to actually add my business name instead of car sparkle, I can, I can change the colors. If we go and look at the right here, you can change the theme. So we can shuffle the theme around and it will change to different fonts and different looks like so. You can also shuffle the color palette. So let's say I wasn't happy with uh, yellow, black, gray, I can click the shuffle option and it'll start to change the colors. Now let's say I wasn't happy with any of these color options, I can simply just click refresh and it'll give me more color options that I can try for my website. And like before as well, you can change the fonts. There's a list of fonts here that you can change as well as the text fonts as well. So if you wanted to change the text fonts, you can. Now regards to using the AI option, I highly recommend that you only get inspiration and you build off of what they've shown you. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it. However, again, if you did need inspiration or you wanted to work off something that they can give you, using the AI option is a great way to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and have a look at their pricing options. So they have five options here. The first one obviously being the free option. The second option is the mini option, which comes at $8. Then there is the basic, pro and enterprise. Regards to which plan is correct for you, it is entirely on your situation. However, I do recommend the basic or pro plan for anyone starting up. So thank you guys for watching my Framer tutorial. Hopefully I've helped you out and giving you a basic understanding of how to create a website with Framer. Again, if you were interested in using Framer, there'll be a link down below which you guys can use. And apart from that, I'll see you guys next time.